I mean, what do you want me to sit up here and say? I told you three months ago, I made this video right here. Three months ago, the Pac-12 is done. And people call me a madman. They call me a madman, but look where we are today. The Big 12 was in terrible position. It didn't matter what move they made on the chessboard, it wasn't gonna be a good one. But, and I have a really big but, you better believe me on this, they didn't make a disaster of a move, and that's what saved this conference. So today, which is Friday, August 4th, was arguably one of the wildest days in college football history. At least that is when you're talking about stuff off the field. Not only did Oregon and Washington finally pull the trigger and make it official, by the way, not going to talk about that too much because we've already made like five videos talking about it, but also the Pac-12 lost three other teams to the Big 12. So in one day, the Pac-12 pretty much it evaporated, the Big 10 got new members, and also the Big 12 got new members. Yeah, I think it goes without being said, it's crazy to say the least, because at one point in time, many people didn't think the Big 12 was going to even add any more teams, and if anything, they was only going to add one more team. And there for a while the past year, was the Big Ten said? Oh yeah, we're not interested in adding new teams and boom out of nowhere, they get Washington and Oregon. And also it's being rumored and speculated they might want more. Who knows what's gonna happen there, but at least for now they get Oregon and Washington. And oh yeah, by the way, we ain't doing no intro, none of that. We ain't got time for that, baby! If you like college football content, consider joining our amazing community. By the way, shout out to everybody subscribed to the channel. I'm so proud and happy to be a part of a community of people that love football as much as me, myself, and I. I love it, man. I love it. And I think you guys do too. And it is right around the corner. Whoa, 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 whoa. First things first, I got to show you guys this. So the other day, I finally caved in and I bought a vacuum because, you know, a vacuum isn't something really you can't not have. Eventually, you got to get one. I got one. And check out my vacuum. Doesn't it look like a ray gun if y'all ever played the OG Call of Duty? Uh, was it? No, I said Call of Duty. The Call of Duty Black Ops with the zombies. Y'all remember the ray gun? That was the first thing I thought of when I unboxed this. I was like, yo, this is like the ray gun from back in the day. Speaking of back in the day, man, that just brought back so much memories playing Call of Duty Zombies. That's when video games were good. Now they're just terrible. I can't even play them. And by the way, was I the only one scared to load up zombies by myself? That was just scary to me. I can load it up all day if I got one of my friends beside me, but by myself, no, nah, you gotta be a different breed. That was one of my favorite games growing up, but let's get back on with the football talk. But getting back on track here, I think most people, they already know, okay, Oregon and Washington, they're going to the Big Ten, blah, 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 we already talked all about that, but then, only about 30 minutes ago, news came out, it's official, the Big 12 is adding not one, not two, but three more teams. Both of the Arizona schools, so Arizona, Arizona State, and also Utah. Hmm, I'm trying to think, where did I see this before? I heard somebody talking about this. Oh, wait a minute, that's right, I was talking about this. Let me pull it up, let me pull it up. Your boy Matt is on a roll, man. I've predicted like the past four or five things that's happened in college football. Where is it at, where is it at, where is it Oh, here it is, here it is, seven days ago. Holy crap, the Big 12 is trying to add more teams. And like I said in the video, we only posted an hour ago. I don't want to toot my own horn and I don't want to sound like a broken record player, but the sources that talk to ESPN, I don't think some of y'all know this, they talk to me first. And I think a lot of people think I'm playing when I say I have sources, but I'm not. When I make videos like this right here, when I say developing story and I'm giving out news and stuff like that, I'm not giving you a guess. I'm giving you information that has been fed to me by very reliable people in the industry. I just wanted to clarify on that. And by the way, shout out to all my sources. You know who you are and you're probably watching the videos. Great people, man. Great people. Now, let's take a look at the newest of new Big 12. We all know they got Colorado. That was about, what was it, a week and a half to two weeks ago? Was it already that long? I don't know. But now, you got Utah on the far left. You got Arizona, Arizona State. So now the Big 12 has 16 teams. The SEC has 16, and the Big 10 has 18. First things first, I've stated this with the Colorado situation, and I got to state it again. We need to give Brett Yormack, the commissioner of the Big 12, a ton of credit. He needs a ton of more respect because it looked like the Big 12 a couple of years ago, they was going to turn into what the Pac-12 currently is now. The Big 12, when they lost Oklahoma and Texas, there was some panic around that conference. Those were the two biggest brands in the conference. A lot of people didn't know what was going to happen after that, and they pieced everything up pretty dang well. Given the circumstances of what happened and where they are today, they've done an incredible job. I'll put it this way. Sometimes in life, when you play chess, you play checkers, it doesn't matter what move you're going to make. You're going to make a bad move, and it's going to cost you, but... You can make a move that's not as worse as a different move. You see what I'm saying? The Big 12 was in terrible position. It didn't matter what move they made on the chessboard. It wasn't going to be a good one. But, and I have a really big but, you better believe me on this, 
They didn't make a disaster of a move, and that's what saved this conference. They stayed composed. They stayed calm, cool, and collected, and it paid off. They made the best move in the situation. It's like when a tornado's coming to your house. It doesn't matter what you do, the tornado's going to hit your house and disaster's going to strike, but you have choices. Are you either going to A, stand outside and put yourself in harm and danger, or B, are you going to go in your basement or go in your closet? My point is, although you can be in terrible positions in this life, you can still make the right choice, even if it isn't the greatest one. And the Big 12 did just that, and that's why they stayed afloat, and I wouldn't even say they're just surviving, they're doing good. I'll get back to the Big 12 in just a second, but as far as what's next for the Pac-12, I mean, what do you want me to sit up here and say, I told you three months ago I made this video right here. Three months ago, the Pac-12's done. And people call me a madman, they call me a madman, but look where we are today. So if I stated it was done three months ago, before six teams left the conference, where do you think I am now on this situation? <laughs> I can tell you this much, my opinion hasn't changed a single bit. All this is doing is just proving my point exactly. I knew the Pac-12 was going to crumble like a cookie. It's done. It's no longer the Pac-12. It's the Pac-4. And what's slowly going to happen with the Pac-12 is going to be the same thing with the ACC once all these ACC teams leave because none of them really want to be there. Is they're slowly going to turn into a conference that has a bunch of what is now group of five teams, your non-Power 5 teams. The Pac-12 is not going to disintegrate. There's still going to be a conference, but it's going to have a bunch of crappy no-name teams that nobody cares about. Eventually, and we'll get used to this in a couple of years, we won't be talking about the Power 5 conferences. It's just going to be, at this point in time now, the Power 3. The Big 12, the SEC, and the Big 10. And eventually, I think eventually down the road, you're going to have two mega conferences, the SEC and the Big 10. But for right now, I think the Big 12, they're here to stay and they're here to play. But the Pac-12 is just like, yeah, good riddance. They'll probably add some Mountain West teams. They'll probably add some lower D1 teams and do all that stuff, trying to save the conference. Not even save it, but just salvage it. That's where we are at the Pac-12. They're trying to salvage this. They're not trying to make a profit. They're not trying to make a return on the investment. Just don't lose all the money. That's where they currently are. Best of luck to them, but I really don't care. The Pac-12 has been irrelevant for 10 years now. But here's where things get uh, really interesting when it comes to a college football playoff. Because remember, we're expanding to a 12-team playoff. And before all this realignment stuff, the winner of the Pac-12 was going to get an automatic bid. Well, now the college football playoff commissioners have came out and stated that they're going to re-examine everything after all this conference realignment. Which essentially means they're going to come to the conclusion that the winner of the Pac-12 no longer gets the automatic bid. Which I agree with 10,000 thousand percent there's only four teams in the conference and they're not that good they'll tell you why that audit matter bid in a heartbeat but i still think the other power i guess now four conferences they'll get their automatic bid that is as long as clemson and florida state the cinnamon rolls don't leave the acc they leave the acc yeah there's not gonna be automatic bid for them overall and all in all i like this move i think it's a fantastic move for the big 12 because you're getting teams in your region. It makes a lot of sense. Utah, Arizona schools, they're right in Big 12 territory. Yeah, you do got UCF. That's kind of out there. But outside of that, the Big 12 is all in one region. And I know you still got West Virginia and Cincinnati out there, but I mean for the most part. Whereas with the Big 10, it's about as far as East and West Coast as it gets. And I said this a few hours ago in the video. I'm sure some of you might have saw already. I'm going to say it again. As a college football fan, I love this. I want to see great teams play other great teams, and this is a step in the right direction. Because remember, what is the biggest knock on college football? Oh, it's not competitive week in and week out. Well, I think that's going to change pretty soon, especially once all these teams join their new conferences. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, roll